It was at one time a glacier sliding atop Antarctica until a massive piece broke off the ice shelf in 1986. Some people are like, what's going on with Antarctica? What's going on in Antarctica? Yeah, so the U.S. government's like, something's going on with Antarctica. There's Basically met with UFOs, Nazi UFOs. One of the things I find most striking is the presence of Antarctica on ancient maps because we didn't discover it until 1820. last remaining territory on the planet that could have such a designation is Antarctica. Buried beneath layers of ice, Antarctica holds secrets that could challenge our understanding of history and change what we consider to be true. Recently, a drone flying high above a remote mountain range captured something shocking. Following this discovery, theories have emerged about uncovering an entrance to a hidden extraterrestrial facility rumored to house unidentified flying objects. Join us as we dive into the investigation and reveal the startling discoveries captured by the drone that caused Antarctica to be shut down by authorities. Antarctica has been a source of fascination since the 7th century. According to a 2021 study published in the Journal of the Royal Society of New Zealand, Polynesian narratives and historical records suggest that the Maori navigators might have been the first to encounter the land itself. Based on their oral traditions, the Maori were likely the first humans to set eyes on Antarctic waters and perhaps the continent. From there on out, it has become an icy and dangerous aspiration for explorers. In January 1773, Captain James Cook, the pioneering British explorer, went into uncharted waters and ended up crossing the Antarctic Circle. This marked the first recorded instance of a European navigator encountering the snowy land. Fast forward a few decades later, in January 1820, the continent's elusive mainland was finally sighted. This was thanks to the Russian explorer Thaddeus von Bellingshausen and the British Royal Navy's Edward Bransfield. Both of them independently reported views of the Antarctic landmass, igniting a spark of curiosity and competition among nations. During their mapping expedition, both of them stated that they had seen high mountains covered with snow, whereas Captain Cook's journey, 50 years before, never sighted land, making it even more exciting. And now, over 200 years later, a drone has made a discovery in the mountains that has led to an entire shutdown of the continent. The quest to go deeper into the Antarctic and its world continued, with Captain James Weddell reaching a then-record southern latitude in February 1823. His journey into what is now known as the Weddell Sea was a true display of the determination of these early explorers. So. Throughout the centuries, the narrative of Antarctic exploration is full of tales of courage and extreme endurance, especially during the heroic age at the turn of the 20th century. Figures like Ernest Shackleton, Robert Falcon Scott, and Roald Amundsen became symbols of this era, pushing the limits of human exploration. Their dangerous but adventurous expeditions aimed to chart the unknown and also to reveal the mysteries of this barren, icy continent. Each voyage, whether it ended in triumph or tragedy, added a new chapter to the stories of Antarctica, transforming it from a blank space on the map into a land of scientific intrigue and legendary exploits. And indeed, the continent's history of exploration is filled with many accounts of strange and unexplained phenomena, too. One of the most notable figures in this history is Admiral Richard Byrd, an American naval officer who led several expeditions to the polar regions during the early to mid-20th century. Byrd's expeditions, particularly his 1947 operation, have been a source of fascination and speculation due to his claims of discovering a huge ice-free area and encountering advanced technology. The details are super interesting. In 1929, Byrd became a national hero for his pioneering flights over the North and South Poles, which were hailed as major achievements in the field of exploration. However, it was his later venture, Operation High Jump, in 1947 that stirred controversy and a lot of intrigue. 
Bird allegedly reported encountering warm regions with lakes and signs of vegetation in Antarctica. This is a complete opposite of the frozen tundra that we know it to be. It's like saying that there are snow caps in the Sahara Desert. These claims were quickly dismissed by officials, but it remains a topic of debate among historians and conspiracy theorists. Adding to the mystery, Bird also reported having encounters with unidentified flying objects during his Antarctic expeditions. While these stories have been largely categorized as legends or exaggerations, they contribute to the aura of mystery surrounding Antarctica. The lack of concrete evidence and the dismissal of Byrd's accounts by official sources has only resulted in further speculation about what lies hidden beneath the ice. Central to the unfolding story of Antarctica's mysteries are the first-hand accounts of Brian, a retired U.S. naval flight engineer. During the 1980s and 1990s, Brian spent over 4,000 flight hours navigating the harsh and unforgiving skies of Antarctica. Brian's experiences in Antarctica were marked by several significant incidents that challenged conventional understanding. Among the most captivating aspects of his encounters was the sighting of a mysterious craft, a revelation that challenges our understanding of technology and possibly our place in the universe. This craft, described by Brian, was unlike any conventional aircraft known to mankind. It was a large, lozenge-shaped vessel, over 100 feet in diameter, with a smooth, white surface that glided silently through the Antarctic skies. The sheer size and silent movement of the craft, coupled with its unconventional shape, suggested a level of technological sophistication far beyond our current capabilities. Brian's attempt to get closer led to a sudden and complete malfunction of all electronic systems on board his aircraft. This is a common trope in UFO encounters, which points to an advanced form of technology capable of disrupting our own. In fact, Brian also witnessed shiny silver disks, perfectly round and about 30 to 40 yards wide, emerging from behind an icy peak. The way they moved was in a synchronized fashion that seemed to defy all known aerodynamic principles. These disks performed complex maneuvers such as spins, speed-ups, and rotations without any wings or jets, further emphasizing their mysterious origin and capabilities. The descriptions suggest these crafts possess capabilities that challenge conventional physics including silent flight electromagnetic interference causing electronic malfunctions and high-speed movement without conventional propulsion. This makes them an unidentified aerial phenomenon and one that continues to baffle researchers still. Brian's attempts to report these sightings were met with resistance and dismissal by military authorities. They confiscated any records of the events and warned him and his crew against speaking out. A pretty severe step. The gravity of Brian's experiences is evident by the fact that they were not isolated incidents. Other members of the Antarctic research and military community have shared similar stories of encounters with unidentified aerial phenomena, strange radio bursts, and other unexplained occurrences. These accounts contribute to a pattern of sightings that suggest a history of unusual activity in Antarctica, which remains largely unacknowledged by official sources. His decision to come forward with his story, despite the potential risks to his personal and professional reputation, highlights the struggle faced by eyewitnesses in bringing attention to their experiences. His detailed descriptions of these encounters provide valuable insights into the mysteries of Antarctica, challenging the scientific and military community to confront the possibility of phenomena that cannot be easily explained or dismissed. The revelations brought forth by Brian and others like him have ignited interest and speculation among researchers, conspiracy theorists, and the public. Their testimonies serve as a call to re-examine the conventional narrative surrounding Antarctica and to consider the broader implications of these unexplained phenomena for our understanding of the world. And now, the mysteries keep growing. Recently, a drone operated by a research team captured unforeseen images at the top of a remote mountain, revealing an abnormal and very unusual formation. This discovery was made during a mission focused on mapping unexplored territories of Antarctica 
using advanced cameras and sensors aboard the drone. The terrain is known for its extremely and harsh conditions and previously, it had successfully managed to elude any detailed scientific examination, but not this time. The imagery and data transmitted back showcased a distinct formation that appeared unnatural, suggesting an opening or cavity on the mountain's surface, potentially indicating a cave or tunnel system beneath. The precision of the formation's geometry was particularly striking, diverging from typical natural ice formations, and this immediately sparked up curiosity among the research team about its origins. But after the drone's discovery on the remote Antarctic mountain, authorities acted quickly to restrict access to the area and shut it down. This swift move to stop any further exploration and drone flights over the specified location was made without any detailed explanation from those in authority, which makes things even more suspicious. What could possibly need to be hidden so secretively? The shutdown process involved a series of immediate actions. The research team was instructed to cease all operations related to the discovery. The area was declared off-limits, and additional security measures were implemented to enforce the restriction. These measures were not accompanied by any official statement or justification, leaving the research community and the public to speculate about the reasons behind such a drastic step. The more you hide something, the more everyone wants to know. Closing off the area was a big deal for exploring Antarctica. It really shows the tricky balance between wanting to learn more and the need to protect these special places, not to mention dealing with all the geopolitical elements that come into play. The decision to restrict access was consistent with the Antarctic Treaty System's principles, which make sure to put environmental protection and scientific cooperation first but also allow for measures to protect areas of particular interest or sensitivity. While this event is the perfect chance for scientists to learn more about the land, governing officials don't seem to share that sentiment. The tension between scientific exploration and government-imposed secrecy in Antarctica is evident in the contrasting objectives of researchers and policymakers. Scientists aim to uncover the continent's secrets to advance human knowledge. While governments often restrict access to certain areas and information, citing environmental protection, national security, or other reasons, this dynamic creates a complex environment for conducting research in one of the world's most isolated and intriguing landscapes. Antarctica's unique status as a demilitarized zone dedicated to peace and science under the Antarctic Treaty System provides a legal framework for international cooperation in scientific research. However, instances where discoveries have led to immediate shutdowns and restricted access highlight the limitations of this agreement in practice. The treaty, while successful in preventing territorial disputes and military activity, does not fully eliminate the influence of state interests on scientific endeavors. The discovery of unusual structures or phenomena, such as the one made by the drone, illustrates the challenges faced by researchers in navigating these restrictions. The lack of transparency and the immediate response to classify the area as off-limits raise questions about what is being protected and why. While environmental conservation is a legitimate concern, especially in a fragile ecosystem like Antarctica's, the suppression of potentially groundbreaking scientific findings without explanation suggests other motives may be at play. Researchers in Antarctica are often at the forefront of important discoveries related to climate change, geology, and biology. The continent's ice cores, for example, offer invaluable insights into Earth's past climate conditions, helping scientists predict future changes. Similarly, the study of extremophiles, which are organisms that thrive in extreme environments, can advance our understanding of life's potential on other planets. But the problem is, these kinds of groundbreaking scientific pursuits require openness and access to diverse areas of the continent. And if governments impose secrecy, then there's not really much that can be researched or explored. The balance between protecting Antarctica's environment and allowing scientific research 
is delicate. While there is a need for caution when it comes to preserving the continent's pristine condition, the imposition of secrecy without clear justifications just dampens the spirit of discovery and collaboration that the Antarctic Treaty aims to promote. The tension between wanting to learn more and dealing with government and security rules shows a bigger issue about how science fits into our world and how much power governments have over information. While those two clash, you can be sure conspiracy theorists are hard at work. After the discovery and the government's decision to close off the area, lots of different ideas have surfaced, trying to explain what was found. Some people are thinking it might be something new in nature we haven't seen before, while others are going big with thoughts of alien tech or lost ancient cities. All these guesses are trying to make sense of the mystery, especially since there's not much official info out there and no one can go back to check it out more. A popular idea going around is that the weird thing the drone spotted might actually be some kind of new geological feature or event only found in Antarctica's wild conditions. People who believe in this theory say that if this turns out to be true, it could be a big deal for our knowledge of Earth's geology and the history of its climate. They think it could give us fresh clues about the forces and changes that have shaped our world over time. Another popular speculation revolves around the possibility of ancient, hidden civilizations. This theory is mostly fueled by historical accounts and myths suggesting that Antarctica was not always covered in ice. We don't know that it may have been home to advanced societies in ancient times. Supporters of this idea often point to ambiguous references in ancient texts and maps that seem to depict the continent as ice-free suggesting a huge and unexplored history buried beneath the ice. Theories involving extraterrestrial involvement have also emerged, driven by eyewitness accounts of unidentified flying objects and other unexplained phenomena in the region. These accounts, including those shared by military personnel and researchers like Brian about the 100-foot vessel and the 30-yard discs, hint at the presence of technology beyond current human capabilities. The theory suggests that the secrecy surrounding the continent may just be related to the discovery of alien artifacts or bases which governments wish to study or conceal. Skeptics of these theories emphasize the need for empirical evidence and caution against drawing conclusions based on incomplete or circumstantial information. They argue that the natural and logistical challenges of conducting research in Antarctica often lead to misunderstandings or exaggerations of findings, which can be misconstrued by those looking for sensational stories. Despite the wide range of theories, the lack of accessible, verified information has prevented any single explanation from gaining widespread acceptance within the scientific community. As long as the specifics of the discovery remain undisclosed, the theories will continue to evolve, each offering a different perspective on what lies hidden beneath the ice in one of Earth's last frontiers. However, such mysteries have always been present in history and continue to confuse experts and common people alike. One such event is the famous Dyatlov Pass incident. In February 1959, a group of nine hikers led by Igor Dyatlov embarked on a trek through the Ural Mountains in the Soviet Union. Weeks later, their bodies were discovered under circumstances that shocked the investigators. Despite sub-zero temperatures, some were found without shoes or proper winter clothing. Others had injuries, suggesting a high level of force, including skull damage and chest fractures, with one victim missing her tongue. The tent they used was cut open from the inside, which shows they made a hasty escape. The investigation into their deaths raised even more questions than answers. The official Soviet inquiry concluded that an unknown compelling force had caused the deaths, a vague explanation that did little to put an end to speculations. Theories have gone from an avalanche to military tests in the area, with some suggesting that the hikers stumbled upon a secret government operation. Despite the passage of time, the Dyatlov Pass incident remains one of Russia's most baffling mysteries. The lack of definitive evidence has allowed for a wide range of theories, including paranormal explanations. In 2019, Russian authorities reopened the investigation, focusing on the natural causes, specifically an avalanche, 
as the most likely explanation. However, this has not satisfied all, with some family members and independent researchers calling for a more thorough examination of all possible factors, including those that may involve military secrecy or unknown activities in the region at the time. The Montauk Project is another well-known case of odd mysteries. It was an alleged series of secret United States government projects conducted at Montauk Air Force Station on Long Island for the purpose of developing psychological warfare techniques and exploring various other exotic research areas, including time travel, teleportation, and mind control. The project is said to have been an extension or continuation of the Philadelphia Experiment, which supposedly took place in 1943 and involved the cloaking of a naval destroyer escort. Informants and supposed former employees of the project have come forward over the years with stories that illustrate a far-reaching and deeply concealed operation. According to these accounts, the Montauk Project managed to achieve a series of technological breakthroughs that could manipulate both mind and matter. These claims include the ability to induce psychological changes in humans, materialize objects through thought, and even open portals to other times and dimensions. While these claims are very interesting, there is a significant lack of verifiable evidence to support the existence of the Montauk Project. Government and military officials have consistently denied any involvement in such an initiative. Critics argue that the Montauk Project is a mixture of science fiction and conspiracy theory, with no solid foundation in reality. However, the persistent circulation of stories and the detailed nature of the accounts have kept the legend alive. Another inexplicable phenomenon under this category is the Tunguska event. The Tunguska event refers to a massive explosion that occurred near the Tunguska River in Siberia, Russia, on June 30, 1908. The explosion flattened an estimated 80 million trees over an area of 2,150 square kilometers, producing a shockwave that measured 5.0 on the Richter scale. Despite the magnitude of the blast, which is estimated to have been 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, no impact crater was found, leading to mass speculation about the cause of the explosion. Initial theories suggested that the Tunguska event was caused by a meteoroid or comet fragment entering the Earth's atmosphere and exploding before hitting the ground. This explanation has a lot of support by eyewitness who reported a fireball seen in the sky on the day of the event. Also, a lot of scientific studies of the area have found microscopic glass spheres in the soil which show a high temperature explosion. The absence of an impact crater and the scale of the destruction have fueled alternative theories including the possibility of a black hole passing through Earth or the explosion of a natural gas pocket. However, these theories lack the scientific evidence to be considered plausible explanations for the event. The Soviet government's interest in the Tunguska event and the subsequent restrictions on access to the site have contributed to conspiracy theories about the incident. Some even speculate that the event was the result of experimental weapons testing or extraterrestrial activity, although there is no credible evidence to support these claims. Scientific expeditions to the Tunguska region have continued over the years, with researchers using modern technology to study tree ring patterns, soil samples, and atmospheric data in an attempt to understand the cause and effects of the explosion. The Tunguska event remains one of the 20th century's most significant unsolved mysteries. And, like the Tunguska region, the Royal Air Force in England has seen many strange occurrences too. The Rendlesham Forest Incident, often dubbed Britain's Roswell, occurred over a series of nights in December 1980. This happened near Royal Air Force Woodbridge, which was being used by the United States Air Force in Suffolk, England. Military personnel reported seeing strange lights and, in some accounts, an unidentified craft with hieroglyphic-like markings landing in the forest. The incident has since become one of the most famous UFO sightings in the world, not least because it was documented by military personnel. Following the initial sightings, military personnel ventured into the forest to investigate. They reported finding depressions in the ground, broken branches, 
and high levels of radiation. Over subsequent nights, the lights and unexplained phenomena continued to be observed, with some witnesses claiming to have encountered a craft of unknown origin. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence from the incident is a memo written by the deputy base commander, Lieutenant Cologne Charles Halt, to the UK Ministry of Defense, describing the events. Halt himself was a witness to the strange lights and took an active role in the second night's investigation. His involvement gave a lot of credibility to the reports, and they were further supported by audio recordings he made during the investigation, capturing the reactions of the personnel as they encountered the unexplained phenomena. Despite the detailed accounts and physical evidence, the Ministry of Defense concluded that the event posed no threat to national security and therefore there was not really a need for further investigation. This response has been criticized by those who believe the incident represents a significant encounter with unexplained aerial phenomena. The US and UK governments have remained largely silent on the matter, beyond stating that no credible threat was identified. Skeptics argue that the sightings can be attributed to misidentified man-made or natural objects, including the bright light from a nearby lighthouse. However, many of the witnesses have contested these explanations, stating that what they saw and experienced does not align with such mundane explanations. However, the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 is perhaps one of the most unusual cold cases in history and one that left the whole world shocked. On March 8, 2014, MH370, a Boeing 777 aircraft carrying 239 passengers and crew, vanished while en route from Kuala Lumpur International Airport to Beijing Capital International Airport. Despite extensive international search efforts, the aircraft has not been found and the reasons for its disappearance remain unknown. The search for MH370 became one of the largest in aviation history, covering huge areas of the Indian Ocean. Satellite data analysis suggested that the aircraft deviated from its planned flight path, turning westward across the Malay Peninsula before heading south into the Indian Ocean. This led to the conclusion that MH370 continued to fly for several hours even after losing total contact with air traffic control. Several pieces of debris confirmed to be from MH370 were eventually found washed ashore on islands in the Indian Ocean and along the African coast. However, these discoveries have provided few answers to the many questions surrounding the flight's disappearance. Theories about what happened to MH370 range from mechanical failure and pilot suicide to hijacking and cyber terrorist attacks. The investigation into MH370's disappearance has been hampered by jurisdictional issues, the vast search area, and the difficulty of searching deep ocean waters. Despite the efforts of multiple countries and millions of dollars spent, the main wreckage site has not been located, and the flight data recorders have not been recovered. The lack of concrete information has led to significant distress for the families of those on board and has fueled widespread speculation and conspiracy theories. The mystery of MH370 has also opened up a lot of discussions about aviation safety, security measures, and the need for improved aircraft tracking over open oceans. UFO sightings even go as far back as nearly a century ago. The Roswell UFO in Sidant Reefers 2, the events that reportedly took place in July 1947 near Roswell, New Mexico, involving the crash of an unidentified object and the recovery of debris and materials by the U.S. military. The incident has become one of the most discussed and controversial UFO cases in history, fueling speculation about extraterrestrial life and government cover-ups. Initially, the U.S. Army Air Forces stated they had recovered a flying disc from a ranch near Roswell, sparking immediate interest and speculation. However, this statement was quickly retracted, and officials declared the debris was merely a conventional weather balloon. Despite the official explanation, speculation persisted about the nature of the debris, with many believing it to be of extraterrestrial origin. Years after the incident, interest was rekindled through interviews with individuals claiming to have been witnesses to the recovery operation. These accounts described materials with unusual properties, 
such as memory metal that could return to its original shape when crumpled. Some witnesses also claim to have seen alien bodies at the crash site, further igniting public curiosity and skepticism towards the government's version of events. The U.S. government released several reports in the 1990s attempting to dispel the UFO theories. One report identified the supposed flying disc as a nuclear test surveillance balloon from Project Mogul, a top-secret project aimed at detecting Soviet nuclear tests. Another report concluded that the alleged alien bodies were likely test dummies from high-altitude parachute experiments. Despite these explanations, the Roswell incident remains a focal point for UFO enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists. Like the Rosewell incident, the Phoenix Lights represent another one of the most widely witnessed and well-documented UFO sightings in modern history. On the evening of March 13, 1997, thousands of residents across the state of Arizona, as well as in Nevada and the Mexican state of Sonora, reported seeing a series of strange, brightly lit objects in the sky. The event consisted of two main sightings, a triangular formation of lights seen passing over the state and a series of stationary lights observed in the Phoenix area. Eyewitnesses described the first phenomenon as a massive V-shaped formation of lights that moved silently across the sky. This formation was seen by people from Prescott in northern Arizona to Tucson in the south, covering a span of approximately 300 miles. The second occurrence involved a series of stationary lights that lingered over the Phoenix metropolitan area, captivating onlookers for several minutes before fading or disappearing. The official response to the sightings was varied. The United States Air Force attributed the stationary lights over Phoenix to flares dropped by A-10 Warthog aircraft during a training exercise at the Barry Goldwater Range. However, this explanation did not satisfy all witnesses, particularly those who observed the large V-shaped formation, which did not correspond to the behavior of flares or conventional aircraft. Public and media interest in the Phoenix Lights surged, leading to numerous television specials, documentaries, and books. The event has been analyzed from multiple perspectives, including scientific, military, and paranormal. Despite extensive scrutiny, no conclusive explanation has emerged that accounts for all aspects of the sightings. Skeptics point to military activities and atmospheric conditions as potential explanations for the phenomena observed, while others speculate about extraterrestrial craft or advanced, undisclosed technology. The lack of definitive evidence either way has allowed the Phoenix Lights to remain a topic of fascination and debate still. Utro. Thanks for exploring with us on Beyond Discovery. If you enjoyed these revelations, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen. It's unbelievable.